everybody. Welcome or welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Olivia and I make videos about anthropology every single Monday. But today we're diving into a very fun, in my opinion, topic. And that topic is life history theory. This subject matter is huge in the fields of biology and biological anthropology. So we're gonna... Yeah, we're going to talk about it and define it, and hopefully by the end of this video, you understand it. <laughs> really quickly, my name is Olivia, and I graduated from UCLA in 2022 with a degree in anthropology and a minor in evolutionary medicine. So this is a topic that I am rather familiar with, and hopefully I can explain it in an approachable way. So yeah onto life history theory. Okay, so put in simplest terms, in my opinion, life history theory is a way that biologists and anthropologists are looking to explain the life cycle of organisms. But not only are we trying to acknowledge and understand this broad idea that is the life cycle of animals here on Earth, but we're doing this through pattern recognition. So there's a lot of patterns that we observe in the natural world within like animals, including humans, and all these patterns together allow us to recognize different trends in the life history of organisms. But if you're confused, not to worry because there's still more to go. So if you Google life history theory online, you're gonna get this definition. Life history theory is an analytical framework designed to study the diversity of life history strategies used by different organisms throughout the world, as well as the causes and results of the variation in their life cycles. I'd be scared too if this was my first time seeing this definition. But the first thing that I want you guys to pick out of here is this idea of life history strategies. Whoa, I thought we were talking about life history theory. Yes, <laughs> we are. But in order to understand that, we have to talk about what's a life history strategy. So let's do it. So I mentioned this at the beginning of the video, but in nature, there are patterns that we observe within animals' life cycles, right? And these patterns, we call them a strategy. Now there's seven different kinds of life history traits. There are more, but these are kind of the big seven that people agree on. Those being size at birth, growth pattern, age and size of maturity, number, size, and sex ratio of offspring, age and size specific reproductive investments, age and size specific mortality schedules, and length of life. What's going on here? Don't get too scared. We're going to focus on some of the bigger ones here. Size at birth, growth pattern, length of life, size, all right? Nothing, nothing too scary. Now, the idea that I want you guys to take away from all these different seven markers of life patterns or whatever is that organisms tend to have similar strategies, right? So what I mean by this is different traits in this group will all cluster together. So let's, let's figure this out through some examples. Think about humans or elephants, right? We mature, it takes a really long time for us to mature, right? Before we can reproduce. We are relatively large organisms when it comes to the animal kingdom. We have really large brains. We don't produce that many offspring. Oh, my camera's gonna die. See you guys in a second. <laughs> we were talking about humans. Now let's think about elephants, right? Same thing. They're very large organisms. They don't produce that many offspring. They live pretty long lives, right? There's all these similarities between humans and elephants. But now let's switch gears. What about a mouse or a rat? They're very small organisms and they also live relatively short lives and they also produce a lot of offspring. Now this is the case, let's, let's think of another small animal, maybe a fish, okay? Fish, same thing, living relatively short lives. They have pretty small body sizes. They're often producing a lot of offspring, okay? There's these traits that are clustering together and this is not a coincidence, all right? That is this idea of life history theory. It's the patterns that we observe within the life cycle of different organisms. And the list goes on and on, right? Think of a primate, another primate, chimpanzees, right? Chimpanzees, similar thing. Longer life cycles, fewer offspring. I, I think you get the idea. They're pretty big, 
Yeah, you get the idea. And the same thing, insects. Like we, and we, we could do this for all day long, guys. So what happens is we see these trends clustering together throughout the animal kingdom into these two strategies, okay? We have what they're called by biologists and anthropologists is fast life history strategy and slow life history strategies, okay? The fast life history organisms or organisms who are opting for a fast life history strategy are these smaller offspring that we were talking about. They're smaller, they're producing more offspring, their mortality rates are high, they're living shorter lives. I'll put on the screen the traits that cluster together. And then we have the slower organisms that include humans and other primates and elephants and lions, and the list goes on. It's a lot of mammals actually. And those organisms are producing fewer offspring, but they live pretty long lives and their mortality rates are low. Right? Are you guys starting to see all these patterns that cluster together in the animal kingdom? <laughs> or am I the only one totally nerding out? and having a good time. <laughs> now, the fast life history organisms are called R-selected organisms, and the slow life history organisms are called K-selected organisms, okay? So if you've heard of those terms before, that's what it's referencing. And again, I did wanna just take a minute to put the different traits that cluster together on the screen. I think I would totally bore you if I talked through them all. So just pause it here and take a screenshot or check all my sources linked down below if you want more information on the exact traits that do cluster together within these fast and slow life history strategies. Now I really just wanna drive this point home, all right? So K-selected organisms, K-selected, slow. Examples, humans, elephants, all right? Our selected organisms, fast life history strategy. Examples, fish, insects, rats, mice, etc. all right? These are the kinds of patterns that biological anthropologists and evolutionary biologists have observed in the natural world. Now, of course, like any rule ever, there are exceptions. There are organisms who embody a lot of traits from maybe an R-selected strategy and a few from K-selected. This does happen, but generally speaking, life history theory as a broader thing looks to describe how and why these kinds of patterns are emerging in the animal kingdom. Now, there's a lot that goes on in life history theory. It feels like we've covered a lot of ground, but trust me when I say we haven't even scratched the surface. Um, organisms are constantly weighing different kinds of trade-offs, all these trade-offs being weighed unconsciously, right? These aren't things that we know <laughs> that we're doing, right? It's just kind of happening. And it's happening because of hundreds of thousands of years of natural selection behind us. And I find that really interesting. So if you guys want a part two on the different trade-offs within life history theory, again, I'll have sources linked down below. But if you guys want a part two or a deeper dive into life history theory, let me know. I did just want to provide this basic introductory video to anthropology, biology, ecology students uh, because this is really important and there's not a lot of people talking about it on YouTube. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I talk about anthropology every single Monday. We have a good time over here. And yeah, okay, I'll see you all next Monday. Bye.